So rotary attachments have come such a long way in the last couple of years from basic simple rollers that barely worked to this. And this is state of the art. This is the Acer KR Pro. And in this video, I'm going to cover all the details of it and you can decide if you want to buy one. So let's get started. Hey there, Steve here and welcome back to the shop. As I mentioned, rotary attachments have really moved along in the last little while and uh, the KR Pro from Acer is no exception. They reached out to me and said, hey, we want to send you one of these things if you want to have a look. And I'm a big fan of rotary attachments. I use them for a lot of things. So I jumped at the chance. Now, what I'm most interested in is how this uh, package compares to the Xtool RA2 Pro, which is the current kind of top of my list. Uh, it works really well and it works across multiple lasers. So I want to see if this one does everything that one can do. It, it certainly looks like it should. Now, unlike the RA2 Pro and most other rotaries for that matter, this one is actually two rotaries in the same box. One is the traditional roller setup that, that you're familiar with on, on a lot of lasers. And the other is a, is a separate three jaw chuck. Now, the reason I think they did this is because they don't want to have to detach and reattach and disconnect hardware and re reconnect hardware uh, like you do in the RA2 Pro. I, it hasn't been a major weakness to me, but I can tell you after using this rotary for even just a few hours, I am so sold on, on just the convenience. But let's see if there's more to it and uh, let's get going. I wanted to start here with a bit of a flyover to show you what's in the box. And aside from the usual uh, you know, tools and, and owner's manual. There's a couple of different rotary tools here. So you can start with the standard roller and it's certainly adjustable on the width. And this is probably what's typical of what, you, what you've seen for uh, most rollers. Now, if you have not something like an RA2 Pro from Xtool, you would also be familiar with a chuck. So this is the second attachment and you can choose which one of these makes more sense to you. So with the roller, of course, you could just drop something on there and, and work with it. Now with a roller, if it's tapered like this, like this mug is, uh, you're going to have some trouble. So that's why the second roller, the second rotary might come in handy where you can just clamp this into the, into the chuck and turn it down and there you go. Now you're gonna say, well, it's still tapered, but what the Acer allows you to do is tilt and it's a case of you tilt it and level it off and it's, it's good. Now this thing will actually let you also go all the way up to, to 90 degrees. In fact, you could even go further, but I'm going to be interested to see if what I can do with it when it's when it's facing straight up. So anyway, this is what's in the box: standard uh, set of chucks, both small and large, uh, pins if you're if you're trying to hold something round, a couple of rollers for the ends, depending on what you're doing, and some tools. So that's it, and uh, we'll put this to use and see what we can do. First thing I'm going to do is use the basic roller, and we have to plug it in. And the way you do that is you reach in and disconnect the Y wire from the stepper motor and plug this wire in. And uh, you can see I had a little trouble there, but it's actually easier than it looks. And uh, then plug the other end into the, into the roller and you're set. So next we're gonna to need to go into light burn or whatever your, your uh, tool of choice is. Uh, and we need to set up the tool for uh, rotary support. And the first thing you wanna make sure you do is go into the settings in Lightburn and turn on the rotary enable switch so that it's visible on the user interface. And that's just a case of turning that switch on. And when you do, you'll see here in the UI that there's a enable rotary and you can turn that on and off if, you're, if you are switching over to uh, a flat engraver cut of some sort, you turn that off. And then if you have your rotary in, you turn it back on. Now, next we need to make sure that the rotary is configured properly. So what I need to do is go up to laser tools and select rotary setup. And we wanna set the type. Now there's two types and we have both of them in this package. So we'll be using both, but right now we're gonna use the rollers. So we wanna switch from chuck to roller. Uh, we certainly wanna enable the roller 
And there's a couple of things we need to do here to configure the roller itself. And the first one is the, the millimeters per rotation. Actually, we'll do the diameter first because that one's easier. And that's 16 millimeters. And then the millimeters per rotation is 50 millimeters. And these are constants for, for the roller. So you just have to remember these and do them. Next, we need to figure out the diameter of our object. Now I'm just using this, this uh, metal drink can and it's 65.95 millimeters. We could easily say 66, I suppose. And you can see when I do that, it'll calculate uh, the circumference of it uh, automatically. And you could enter either one of these and it will calculate the other one that's missing. We're using the Y axis. Uh, that should normally be set by default anyway. And that's it. And I created a simple little uh, image here. Now I won't go into the boring details of uh, letting you watch a laser engrave. Uh, suffice it to say it, it works. And when you're done, you get something like this. And if I can show you the, you can see there's a very fine ellipse around the outside of that. Now I also did something a little more intricate here. I did a water bottle, stainless steel bottle. And uh, you can see it engraving here on the laser. Uh, the reason I didn't show you the rotary here like I'm doing now is you can see that it's very slow. So, uh, you know, it, it does engrave, it works really well. Uh, the important thing here is when I did both of these, uh, these containers on the roller, uh, neither one of them had anything in it. The, 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 uh, drink can in particular weighs about a gram. It's basically will blow away in the wind and I did nothing to restrain it onto the rollers. Uh, I didn't put anything inside it and it worked really well. So uh, tracking is great on, on this roller. All right, with the roller tested here and proving to be a pretty spectacular roller actually, uh, we're now ready to test, test the chuck. So what I did was I put the three pins in the center of the chuck because I'm gonna put just a piece of paper tube on uh, on the chuck and the first thing I'm going to do is measure the diameter because we're going to need that later and then slide it over the pins and uh, just tighten up the chuck. Actually in this case we're loosening the chuck but it's tightening it up around the around the tube and we'll just do a quick sample on this on this paper tube and then we'll move on to something a little more interesting. Now, since we've switched to the chuck uh, away from the roller, we of course have to go back into Lightburn and reconfigure it. So we're gonna go into the rotary setup again and we're gonna select chuck. Now you may notice it took one field away here because we don't care about the roller diameter uh, in part because there are no rollers. All we need to know is the millimeters per rotation. And in the case of the chuck, that's 160 and we need to know our object diameter or its circumference. And I happen to have measured that and it's 83.5. And when the engraving is done on the paper tube, you'll get something that looks like this. Now this looks a little grainy, but the, keep in mind this image engraved is really only about an inch tall. So it is very small uh, and it actually turned out pretty well, all things considered. So I put the small jaws on, on the chuck and put a tumbler in there, but you can see the tumbler's not level, but you can use this knob, this tilting knob to control the, the angle and you can get it adjusted nice and level. And that's just a really nice feature. I don't know why more companies don't, don't think of things like this. So kudos to Acer for that. And I did a little bit of, uh, of an engraving design on here. I'm just showing you a bit of the, the actual engraving operation. And when the output is finished, uh, you can see the tumbler here uh, just looks great. And again, no support, no alignment uh, control, nothing. It just, I just plopped it on the chuck and it worked fine. So kudos to Acer for, it's really a great rotary attachment combination. So there you go. You can see the KR Pro uh, is a really awesome combination of tools. Uh, very well designed. It's all metal. I can't say enough good things about it. Uh, now, I've been a longtime fan of the RE2 Pro from, from uh, Xtool, and I really have to say that it may have seen its last days in my shop. Uh, the, the KR Pro is just head and shoulders above it, and keep in mind, it's the same price as an RE2 Pro. So, uh, you know, the RE2 Pro is a, fine, is a fine attachment, make no mistake, but this is just that much better. 
And, uh, you know, kudos to Aitzer for bringing this to the market. And I want to thank them for letting me give it a try. So if you're in the market, definitely consider this. And with that, we can wind down. I'll put a couple of videos up in the corner here. Go watch those and I'll see you over there and get out there and make your world. And I'll see you next time.